Hi everyone, uh, as you've probably known, if you looked at my product page, uh, most of the Polaroid uh, camera bags my manufacturing are based on um, this guy, the now long discontinued uh, possible project Polaroid Lab. It's, it's a several versions, but they kind of look like this. Anyways, are getting very hard to find and expensive. And um, even though I still fully service them, and then you know I still gonna make and still making the adapter kits to transform this into various camera bags for Momaya RB67 or Momaya Universal Press or Polaroid 600 XC or Fuji Fuji GX680. And knows what else is possible um i've been trying to move away from this because it's it's an unreliable market uh, anyway so uh <clears throat> based on what other people have done uh specifically the guy from lofi.com i don't remember the exact website um I've been looking at uh, using a regular iTide camera, in, uh, the one step two, and um, the one step viewfinder, all of those, uh, which still have the entire motor housed in the front. The new unibody models do not have that, so Polaroid screwed us models again, so these are again discontinued. but. The market is kind of slightly with them, so hopefully there's still gonna be some for a while. Anyway, so I'm gonna use trying to use this as a back. The issue with this is that unlike Impossible Labs, they do not have a built-in dark slide. So that's uh, one thing I have been working on: how to adapt the dark slide and also how to cleanly reuse the electronics here without extensive rewiring of the entire inside of the. Uh, camera so this is part one of the conversion video I don't know if I'm gonna be offering this as kits but uh, this is more like I'm documenting what's how I take on this apart uh, I'm very close to a prototype I think I know got everything worked out including the dark slide yeah and uh, but um, let's start with this so <clears throat> i got this one off ebay it's all that's non-functional so i don't care if i break it in any possible way but so i guess the first thing we want to do with this it's uh, what we do with the impossible labs i'm sorry for the less than organized collection of tools here I've been sick on COVID for a while, so I don't even know why I'm doing this at the moment. Anyway, so let's use a Phillips screwdriver. It's fine. Let's take the back cover off. As far as I remember, this is a big bit of a pain to take off and also reattach, but uh, it's doable. I mean, I've done it before. So let's take these two Phillips screws off. I, let's pretend we're keeping all these screws. We are, we, you should. I, I have a large collection of these screws. They're identical to what, what the company used for the Impossible Labs. These small black plastic screws. Four plastic, not plastic screws. All right. And let's pop this off. It should just come off. I think it really does. There you go. Off. And in uh, Impossible Lab style, you can see the ribbon cable, but there's nothing coming off of it. It's all continuous. So we're gonna try to save this. We really want that. All right, so. All right, and let's uh, unclass this. Just going on. 
All right, so I am gonna try to unhook this from here, just the same way we do the impossible apps. I think it should work fine. One, all right. And why am I doing that? Uh, try not to damage this ribbon cable. This is most precious. And but the reason I'm doing this is that if we do that, we expose these screws that hold these plastic pieces attached to the front. So, so let's um, take this off because we're gonna need to take off this and that plastic top. So take this screw off. Okay, same, about five millimeter long black screw screw plastic to three. Oh. And while we're at it, we are gonna reuse these mounting holes. So it's good to notice the type of screws you're gonna use there. I'm probably going to be reusing, I'm probably going to be replacing this with similar size screws, but longer. <clears throat> but uh, I may just use these two. So they should go from the bottom too. It's good to know. Anyway, so that's done. And let's uh, class this back. We don't be taking great care of not to bend the ribbon cable too much. <clears throat> All right, done. And let's see what can I do here. So as far as I remember, the first thing we need to do is to pop off this last cover. A bit of a mistake, but uh, that's where I'm gonna start. You can use whatever you want, small screwdrivers. And this may not be pretty or correct, but I'm definitely not gonna use the lens again. Get a, I bent this thing. Oh, that's not cool. Let me get a better screwdriver for that. Okay. <clears throat> oh, this is a blade. Driver. Yeah, it has to come off for sure. Oh, still me. You just kind of twist it up, and this is it. All right, we're done here, and then. I think this just pops off. Yeah. There you go. It does just pop off. Alright. And thanks to those removed screws. There you go. As I suspected, just came off. All right, so keep this for something. I don't know what. Yeah. So it looks like that. All right. So what we really care about here, and what we should really care for is this. This 
the ribbon cable right here. That's all we care about. So we wanna make sure that we take that off cleanly. Uh, it has a black tab, these connectors, and then kind of lift the black tab towards us. There you are. And that should allow us to cleanly remove that ribbon cable. Out. It's out. All right. And um, there's other things here. There's other ribbon cables that connect other electronics, but you don't really care about those. I don't know exactly what this does, for example. I, I don't care. So, I'm gonna take this off too, to allow us to separate the electronics cleanly. I don't care about much. This is a I think the film cartridge sensor goes in the front. It only connects the rest of the camera and I'm not reusing this. Just gonna keep it aside. So let's see how can I take oh alright so now the top I just in the same way the impossible labs tops were held to the bottom. I think they're held to the bottom by two screws on the inside here, one here, one here. So let's take this off too. Alright. <coughs> this needs to be a bit easier than I expected. Okay, one. They're the same five millimeter, approximately five millimeter long black screws like that for plastic. Yeah. By the time you take this apart, you can have a great collection of them. Anyway, so let's see if the com top comes off. And you know what? Okay, okay, when you do that, make sure, notice how the, the ribbon cable is still kind of cutting here, it's going to the front, so kind of push it down a bit, make sure you don't damage it, because again, what is all we care about right now is this guy, okay, you don't damage it when you do this, because otherwise, everything is still possible, but for all I is to preserve this so we can elegantly connect the entire assembly to new electronics. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of cut in there somewhere. There you go. All right, so it seems to be in one place and not terribly damaged, hopefully. All right, so now we can free. See, there's any other screw. Oh, yeah. There's no. The only thing that's holding this to the middle piece, which we're gonna use, are these two hooks here. So let me just come, come off. screwdriver just to put a plastic on this side or something just these plastic hooks <sighs> ah, come on. there you go done all right so this is clean um you can reuse this for whatever you want uh, just so you know there's a battery in here somewhere uh, right behind here and it's still fully charged not a yeah I mean and, and there's a flash condenser that's still fully charged so be very careful if you disassemble this and use it for something else uh, cut the co uh, condenser 
wires one by one. Don't touch them together. First, so you can remove it without shorting yourself. And um, the battery is 100 milliamps, 1000 milliamps, 3.7 volt. It's a big unit, one single cell. And you can use that for other projects too. Anyway, so this is this is trash for me. This is what we're looking for. All right, so we're gonna use this as the base of a new build. Uh, the first one is gonna be RB67. And hopefully I'm gonna shoot a second video showing you how to assemble this. All right. Yeah.